Hi Workday Experts, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to cover what all the value additions I have done on the EIB. EIB is one of the very fundamental uh, you know, integration types. Most of us would have used EIBs. What are all the value additions I have done on the EIBs itself? So let's get started. So as I was saying, EAB is uh, EAB is one of the you know one of the very mostly used integration types in Workday ecosystem. So I was able to add some value. So recently I had to you know develop like a set of three to you know, four to five integrations, and most of uh, most of the integrations were EABs except one which was Studio. And how I was able to add value. To the AABs itself, I'm going to uh, share. There are three, three, uh, you know, value additions I have done. I'm going to share those with you today. So I'm going to th the specific example I'm going to pick today is uh, is uh, demographic and payroll information. We had to send to the vendor on a daily basis, and um, how how I was able to add value. And just to give you some perspective, right? This demographic, this integration, we had to send approximately 56 fields and uh, and uh, thousands and thousands of employees, all the employee population. I'm not going to tell you exact number, though. So these three are the value additions I was able to do. First is effective date and entry moment, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I know most of most of you would have used entry moment effective dates, but how it adds value, how it add, has added value in our project, I'm going to share with you. And second thing is that I have created a tool using Excel uh, and how it has helped the project overall. And then uh, how the document transformations adds value to the business overall. So let's get started with the first one. So I know most of you would have already used the effective date and entry moments. Uh, so, so what was the value addition of what I was able to do is, in this project, uh, I was able to, you know, eliminate 72% of the test cases we didn't have to enter. We were able to use production transactions itself as a uh, test cases. So what do I mean by that? How was I, how was I able to achieve? So it was not that easy. I had to you know prove. I had to I had to you know make sure that my approach is working. I know which which works. I had to tweak some of the fields uh, because some of the fields are not related, right? I had to tweak them, and I had to make sure that that is working. That's the first thing. But at the same time, I had to convince my business users, project managers, and everyone that this approach works we can actually use the production tra transactions what uh, happened like uh, you know three, six months back for our test cases so as you know this saves not only data entry time uh, but also documentation coordination all these things will be saved so how we have actually used production transactions right let's just say we we have done our uh, you know testing in the month of november so I was able to convince the business to use the April 1st data as a baseline data. And uh, we uh, have planned three rounds, round one, round two, round three. Round one is May one, round two is June one. And round three is the, as of today. So for round one and round two uh, is May one and June one, right? So whatever the transactions happened from April to May in the production itself, right? We were able to use those transactions uh, for the real uh, testing. Like for example, there was a hire, there was a termination, uh, there was a rehire, there was a you know leave, promotion, salary change, uh, management level change, or whatever, whatever, whatever the case they had. So uh, and then from May one to June one, again there are some uh, you know incremental changes, right? For example, there was an employee who went on leave and in the first round the employee went on leave second round the employee should should come back uh, you know return from leave that, how that was also covered 
so in that way i was able to cover 72 percent of the uh, you know total test cases it was huge uh, it was a huge saver in terms of uh, uh, time and everything so and the last round only the last round was that remaining 28 percent of the test cases had to be manually entered and uh, you know those were very complex scenarios you know very once in a while happens right so that was the success story here and there is one another advantage also with the effective data and entry moment right um most of the most of the times we won't have flexibility to do our testing in the production itself like for example there was a uh, there was an issue happened uh, there is an issue happening in, in current production the business users have informed us but we cannot play in the production itself right we had to wait for the sandbox to get refreshed then after for example the issue happened on monday and then friday itself friday is the only day the sandbox get refreshed that means the next week this if we run the same integration the same scenario may not happen if we are not using effective data and entry moments so if with this effective data and entry moments we can recreate the test case uh, in the sandbox from the last week or last month or whatever the uh, you know history it may be of 10 years back uh, theoretically right so we i was like uh, in the support mode it will be very very helpful to troubleshoot and give uh, expected results right this will be very helpful i always encourage there are some glitches we have to be very careful with some of the fields they are not effective related we have to make them effective related fields uh, um, I don't have to teach you how to do that. Uh, so that's about the effective data and entry moment. So let's jump. To so I have created a comparison tool uh, using Excel sheet where the data and uh, you know around zero and round one can be easily compared. This will be very very handy as I was saying it. Uh, we had like uh, 56 columns, so it's very difficult to. You know get sense of 56 columns information right so uh, I have created a tool where we can search where we can search with this employee ID and then the differences will be easily shown here so I'm going to show a demo and uh, along with that I'd like to mention that I have posted a LinkedIn post with this uh, you know Excel tool you can download and you can use it and uh, if you have any issues you can comment in this uh, you know youtube video and i'll i'll share you with the with the document in other other ways okay so let's just think that this is the round zero data and this is round one data so there is no much difference between the round zero and round one except you know there is some data difference in this row like here it is patricia and this is uh, patricia one and uh, last name is Alexan and this is Alexan one and then there is one row added at the end so when we map these two files to the excel the excel tool right so this is excel tool and uh, see here all we have to do is give the employee id and it will show the differences this is around zero information this is around one information and to prove this is dynamic right so let's just say i'm going to make this as alex alexan and then the date as instead of 24 23rd i'm going to give 24 right and then save in the excel all i had <clears throat> sorry in the excel all i had to do is go to the data and refresh all so here the last name is same and then data worth is changed what if we give the newly added employee like nine. see here round zero is shown as blank and the round one is that so every data is different so it is very dynamic and very handy very useful very appreciated by business and uh, i have given the link uh, you know for LinkedIn post in this description below.
right? And then the third concept is document transformation. I know most of us will, will use the XSLT transformation on the EAB itself, but there is some value addition if we are using uh, you know, document transformation. So what is that? So we cannot, or I should not technically, I cannot say that, but it won't be so much useful to the business users if we give the vendor and vendor file to the business users. And then it's like a you know text file, it could be a comma separated or a, it could be a pipe delimited or it could be a space delimited. It's not that easy to understand. And the date, if the data is available in Excel sheet, it will be very much helpful to the business users, not in the text format, right? So I have used two document transformation. The first document transformation actually creates a file for the vendor and second transformation actually creates a file for the business users. That's the CSV file. So that can be opened in an Excel and it's very intuitive. That is the advantage of that. And the other, the other value addition I have done on the business users file is along with the data, whatever the data is being sent to the vendor, I have added aggregations. What do I mean by that aggregations is, I have summed up the payroll information by company or by pay group or whatever or job code or whatever it makes sense to the business. And not only count wherever it's required, I have added the sum also. So first like a sum by company like there are like uh, how many companies are there like there are four companies the sums will be uh, here and then count by the company and sum by pay group and count by pay group so it will take like uh, maybe 50 60 rows in the excel first and then followed by the full employee information whatever the information is sent to the vendor that is also very hugely appreciated by the business and it will be very very helpful on the ongoing basis also so these are the value additions I have done in our uh, project. So if you have any questions, comments, please, uh, please comment to this YouTube link uh, and uh, I'll, I'll address those. And happy coding. Meet you once again in the next uh, YouTube channel. Bye-bye.